Hi, I'm Joy from Totness Yoga. I'm going to share with you in this video um, one of my own personal practices. So it's a video of me in the garden, in the orchard where I live. Um, and it's a bit earlier on in the spring. So the bluebells are beginning to come out and um, the buds on the apple trees and things like that. But it's not like full-blown spring like it is now. Um, and the reason why I wanted to share this um, it was basically just me doing my own practice in the garden. I just decided to record myself. Um, but the reason I want to share it is because I used to really, really not like Ashtanga yoga. And this particular practice is um, my version. So it's like half the primary series. It's a lot, it's a lot simpler. It's fairly gentle, but um, I don't see it as beginner's yoga at all. Um, and the reason why... Yeah, I just didn't used to like Ashtanga Yoga at all. I used to think it was um, about people striving to try and kind of push their body through um, certain um, postures and, um, you know, very fixed um, sequencing. So that the people, you know, um, people would practice it over and over again. That's exactly the same sequence, the primary series. Um, and, but I decided to do it um, a few a few years ago I decided to take it on as a challenge because my brother's been really really ill for a lot of years um, and he was wanting to try stem cell therapy um, for a, a severe case of chronic fatigue and so we were as a family were trying to raise lots of money for him um, so he could do this expensive treatment and I decided to do a three-month equinox autumn equinox to the winter solstice um, to do a challenge of doing the ashtanga primary series every day it's quite intense <laughs> um so i did this three month challenge and although it did hurt my body quite a bit um i actually was left with this love of the practice and actually i really saw the value in maybe not doing it every day or the whole of the primary series but i saw the value in having this sequence this sequence that had been um um, kind of uh, birthed by Watabi Joyce um, many years ago and you know um, where it'd be a very well thought out sequence and I just yeah I saw the benefit in that and and I really um, was very grateful became very grateful for the practice and the, the meditation of the practice doing that every day um, and the, the mantra at the beginning and the mantra at the end and yeah, it felt it felt really became very special to me um, so it's a practice that I've been left with um, and I still do it I still do it um, every well every now and again more than every day so it's not as it's not all the time um, my body doesn't like to do it all the time so yeah I'm left with it and it's yeah I'm left with a big gratitude with for this practice and I thought I'd want to share it with you um, and the good news is we did raise all the money for my brother which is fantastic and he's still struggling with his health but it was a very massive big boost and you know, just very thank thank you to all the donors, all the people who donated. Um, that was amazing, and such such an amazing pouring of love for Luke, my brother, um, and yeah, and also for me, massive gratitude for this Ashtanga practice, a much shortened version. But hope you enjoy it, and just go slowly. I I give in, in as much instructions as I can, but. Um, it, during the um, the voiceover in it, so I hope you enjoy it. Standing at the front of your mat with your feet together and your hands in Namaste. Oh, Vande Gurunam Char Vande Sanarita Swatma Sukha Bode. Nishraya se jangli kayomane sam sala hala hala moha shantiye abahu paru shakram chantirasi dariram sahasra serisram svetam pranamami patanjalim Siri Namaskara A. 
Inhaling the hands up and exhaling, folding forward. Inhaling, flat back. Exhale, step back to Chaturanga, so you're in the plank. Coming down and then inhale up into upward dog. You can do that is a cobra and you don't have to go straight down in Chaturanga. So now back into downward dog, you can walk out the dog. So five breaths here. So that's already a couple of breaths. So three, that's your third breath. Tummy tucked in, really focusing back, four, focusing your chest back towards your heels, five, and looking forward, inhale, flat back, exhale, folding forward, inhale up, exhale, the hands back to namaste. Inhaling. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, and step back to plank. You can lower the knees down like I was saying before. And then you can just come up into a small cobra or up into a higher cobra if you wish to rather than downward dog. And then exhale back into, sorry, that's upward dog. But exhale back into downward facing dog. Three breaths, five breaths here. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five breaths. Inhale, step forward, flat back. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, lifting up and exhale with the hands back to namaste at the heart inhale breathing in stretching up exhale folding forward inhale flat back exhale stepping forward to plank chaturanga inhale up upward facing dog exhale back downward facing dog one two so remembering your heels are just going as far down as possible. Four, there's no rush to stretch your hamstrings too much. Five. And then after the fifth breath, stepping forward, inhale. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, stretching up, extended mountain posture exhale bringing the hands down to the heart inhale exhale fold forward inhale flat back exhale and coming back into chaturanga exhaling down inhale up exhale back into down facing dog five breaths here so your feet will be hip width apart one you're really encouraging the chest back towards just step back towards your knees three four and five bringing yourself forward inhaling flat back exhale folding forward careful not to lock out the knees whenever you do those fold forwards in uttanasana then Stretching up, inhale, exhale, down. So this is Sira Namaskar B. So second, we're doing some rounds of B now. So coming into Uttanasana briefly and then riding through back to Chaturanga. So the same breaths as before. Inhaling up, downward facing dog. And then exhale. I'm mean, sorry, upward facing dog. <laughs> In the middle of, exhale, downward dog. Inhaling up into warrior one. Exhale, down Chaturanga. Inhale, up, upward dog. Exhale, back into downward dog. Inhale, up, left leg forward this time. And then exhale, down Chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, back into downward dog. So that's quite fast. It's quite fast movements when you're bringing in the warriors. 
two, second breath, three, four, taking deep breaths, five, so you're having five breaths in every downward dog at the end, you're having taking five breaths, nice slow breaths, inhale forward, exhale, bring yourself down to Uttanasana. Coming up into to bent knees again, Uttanasana, Utkatasana that is, and then exhale, hands down into heart. Utkatasana again, exhaling, folding forward, inhale up, exhale, step back to Chaturanga. Exhale, so bring yourself up into upward dog, inhale, exhale, back down and brought dog for one breath. Inhale, Virabhadrasana one, warrior one with the right foot. Exhale, and then inhale up into upward dog. Exhale, downward dog. Coming into warrior one, left foot. Inhaling up, exhale, hands shoulder width, down chaturanga. Inhaling up. Upward dog, exhaling five breaths in downward facing dog. One, you can shake out your head, loosen up your head, realign your two, realign your feet so they're hip width apart. Three, your feet can be slightly pigeon toed so you're, you're making sure the outside edges are in line with the mat. Four, and five. Then stepping forward, looking forward, flat back, inhale, exhale, folding forward, inhale, coming into Utkatasana briefly, exhale, hands down to heart, inhale up, next round, exhale forward, so up, you're doing Utkatasana there, so then inhale, looking up, exhale, Chaturanga, as you come down, remember, lovely strong core in this, in this exhale, back down with dog, in this um, video, I'm, you can see my core is not feeling that strong this morning, um, that morning. So, ex uh, left foot is warrior one. And then inhale, lifting up, down, upward dog. And then exhale, downward dog. Right, uh, left foot, warrior one. That was the right foot last time. And so coming down, Chaturanga again, nice and strong in your core muscles, coming straight down. Inhale, up, upward dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Five breaths. Lovely, strong dog. Exhaling. Two. Three. Four. Five, and then stepping forward, inhale, flat back, exhale, fold forward, inhale, Uttanasana, bent legs, and then exhale, hands down to heart. And so here I'm going to come, I'm coming into, um, the feet are hip width apart now, rather than together, and hands on hips, folding forward, exhale forward, and we're doing um, Padangustasana. So hasta parangustasana. So holding your peace fingers around your big toes. So there are modifications you can make. So five breaths here. So that's the third breath. Three. Four. Five. Looking up, inhale. And then putting your hands underneath. This is... Um, Padahastasana, so that's your hands are under your feet. One, two, three, four, five. You can't actually see so well because of the grass, but your hands are actually under your feet. Then you hold, putting your hands on your hips, bending the knees. Don't forget to bend your knees because we don't want to lock out the knees at any point. Now we're going to come into Trikonasana. It's one of my favourites. So this, in this case, I've done it with my left foot first, but it's usually your right foot. So um, 
So coming forward, you can bend the knee if you need to, but then you bring the the right, uh, the, sorry, in this case it's the left, the left hand forward, and you can find any place on your leg, it's five breaths here, and you, I've, I'm actually clasping my toes with my peace fingers. So we're probably on about the third breath now. So three, oh, no we're not, <laughs> it's short, quite short. So that was five breaths, but I did it short. Okay, on the next side. Okay, taking hold of your toe or anywhere on your leg. Careful not to lock out the knees. Opening up the heart, five breaths. We're on the third breath, four. And then five. And coming into paravrita. So this is, means revolving. So you're coming the other, the other way around. So you'll turn around to face your left foot again. And then you're placing your hand down somewhere on the leg. I've got it on the ground. And then it's five breaths here. It's probably on three breaths. Four. And five. Bring yourself up. You can see I'm breathing like a hamster. <laughs> Short breaths. <laughs> Okay, and then the left hand is down, so you're revolving. So this is like a, this is a twist, lifting up the right hand. Three, four, five. So bring yourself back up. You can use blocks for any of those as well. It's really helpful to have a little block there that you can just you can just place your hand on. Okay, this is um, Pajva Konasana. So this is when you're actually bringing yourself, you're bringing yourself actually so that you're folding, um, sorry, that you're resting either on your um, left, the bent left leg, so that the knee is over the ankle, or you're resting on the floor like I am. And again, it's five breaths. So we're coming up after five breaths, bring yourself up. And then coming in the other way round, so you can see the legs are bent and the knee is directly over the ankle. So you can either have rest on your thigh or you can place your hand on the floor. And there's a straight line, so it's a fairly straight line. So four, so you're having lovely deep breaths as I'm speaking. And then five. And we bring yourself back up. And then coming into Parafrita. So this is Parafrita Pashvakonasana. So you actually can have your, you put your hands together like I'm showing you now, like a piece, piece at the heart, and then you can revolve round. It's a lovely twist. Now what people do, if more advanced, is putting your hand on the mat. So five breaths again. So that'd be four. And then five. And I like it at my heartbeat. I like to do that one. I prefer it than putting the, putting the hand right down onto the mat. Bring yourself forward. Unfortunately, you can't see me very well because I'm revolving. So there we are. I'm showing you hands at the heart. And you can place it down, like I said, on the mat. So they're really strong. And remember that you're holding in your pelvic floor, your mulabandha. So really like holding your body strong from your pelvic floor up so your root up four and five bring yourself back up and then back up to the top of the mat with hands to the heart we're coming into prasarita pasotasana so with your legs apart we're just going to do two we're just going to do a and c i think it is so bring your hands down onto the mat. You can bend your knees if you're feeling like you're locking out your knees at all. So bend your knees a little bit if you need to and then straighten them as much as you can. And folding forward for five breaths. So we're on four. Five. Lifting up, inhale, bring your head up, hands on the hips. Whenever you come up, you're bending the knees slightly. 
Bring your hands to a T, and then clasping your hands behind your back. I'm showing you the clasp. Clasp hands behind your back, opening up the chest, bending the knees slightly, folding forward, and then you can start to straighten the knees. And then you see your hands can slowly, as much as they can, just go over the, over your head, as it will feel like. But it just depends on the flexibility of the shoulders. So three. Four. Five. And then when you're ready, you bring your hands back to your hips, bend the knees and bring yourself back up. Stepping to the front of the mat with the hands up, namaste. And coming into Paz Votonasana. And we're taking the hands and prayer behind the back. Now, if you can't do that, you can just clasp your elbows. That's fine. And so your feet are just a little, they're not very far apart. And you're in, your back leg is slightly out, like by 15 degrees. And your front, your front leg, your right leg is um, directly facing the back of the mat. Three. Four and five. So lifting up. Okay. And then turning the other direction. So you've got heel. So actually you're slightly wider. You're not heel to heel alignment or anything like that. You're slightly wider. But it could be heel to heel. And then bring yourself forward. So three. Four. Five, and then lifting up, bring the hands to Namaste and stepping to the front of the mat. Okay, so we're going to come into Uttahita Hasta Padangustasana. So taking hold of your big toe, if you can, you don't have to do this, by the way. You can just bend your knees. So two, three. Four, five, and opening up to the side. So this is Pajva. So Uttahita Padam Kasasana, so it's part but the Pajva version version. One. Oh sorry, we're on probably three. Four. Five. And then bring yourself forward. So really strong tummy muscles. Remember this you're holding in your core. And now you're going to do it independently without holding your foot. Two. Three. Four, five. So I'm a bit shorter on that one. It's obviously quite hard. Okay, taking hold of your foot with your peace fingers, your toe that is. Three, four, five. Opening up, Pajva. So it's your left foot. One, two, Three, four, five. Bringing forward, so holding for a moment, and then holding out your leg independently on its own. One. You can see you've got really, really two. You've really got to hold in your three. Oh, I only managed three, and then down. You've got to hold in your tummy muscle. Just hold yourself very strong for those ones. So down this one is Uttahita Ekapada and um, Padmasana. So it's uh, the lotus posture. So one-legged, standing one-legged lotus posture. So you can do tree here if you want to, if you know tree. Otherwise, you're clasping from behind if you can. If you can't clasp, you don't need to fold forward. Three. Four. Five. And then looking up, inhale. Bring yourself back up. You can bring your hand, your foot down, and your hand. You see how your hand is clasping behind that. So you, you only need to do that if you want to. You only have to just like don't fold forward if basically if you can't clasp. One. 
two, three, four, five. So really lovely, yeah, inhaling up. So really lovely, strong legs this is about, this one. I, mean, I really love this one, so I end up finding myself there for a longer time. And bring yourself down. Hands to the heart center and inhaling up. Exhale down, we're coming into a vinyasa. Exhale down, chaturanga, inhaling up. Exhale back, downward dog. Okay, so coming up into Utkatasana, so five breaths in Utkatasana. So please, please, please tuck in your tailbone. You won't be able to see it so well because I'm just wearing a dress, but tuck in your tailbone so you're not hurting your lower back. So I've got to sway back, so that's five breaths. Exhaling down, and then I'm coming up into Crow here briefly and just coming onto my forearms into crow so just for a moment if you fancy crow and then stepping back chaturanga inhaling up exhaling back into downward dog and then we're coming up into warrior one one two three four five, warrior one the other side, so this is now your left foot forward, one, two, three, four, five, now we're opening up, stay the same side, so it's still your left foot with your knee over your ankle, we're now coming into warrior two, two, three, four, five. And turning around, so you've got heel to arch alignment. It's one, so right footed forward, two, three, remember your four, five. And so remembering your, in the warriors, your knee is over your Ankles so coming, stepping back. So you've just done a vinyasa and then coming back into warrior two. Sorry, not warrior two, downward dog. Making it up now. Okay, so now we're coming into the seated sequence. So yoga therapy. So you're in dandasana. Legs straight, feet are flexed, hands by the side. Three, four, Five. So remembering that this is kind of line of energy coming from the crown, so the base of the spine right through the crown of the head. And now you're folding forward into Paschimottanasana. So taking hold of where, whatever you can. So it might be your ankles, shins. Otherwise you're holding your peace fingers around your toes if you can. A few, for a few breaths and then bring yourself forward a bit further if you can. So you're doing a kind of bind around your feet in Paschimottanasana. Three, four, five, six, <laughs> seven. And then lifting up. So I got a bit carried away. I obviously like that one. Lifting up. And then we're coming into Purvottanasana. So it's the upward facing plank. Two. Three. Four. Five. And bring yourself down. Lifting up anything at all. And then we're coming through Chaturanga. Inhaling up, exhaling downward dog. Bring yourself through for Ekapada Pad, Padmasana. So it's, it's like the standing one, but actually you're, sit, you're seated, so you're clasping around if you can. Bringing your 
bend your knee and then so five breaths again so we'll be on three four five and then lifting up Lifting up anything at all, we're, we're missing out the vinyasas in between each side in this one. It's a shorter practice. So clasping around, so you've got your foot in your left foot now in, um, in a lotus and you're clasping around if you can. Three. Four. Five. When you're ready, lifting up, inhale, and then lifting up anything at all, and then coming into Chaturanga, inhaling up, upward dog, exhaling downward dog. So you can miss out any point, you can miss out any of these vinyasas at any point. If you've had enough, you're like, oh, I just don't want to. So this one, Triyan Mukha Ekapada Pashimottanasana, a bit of a mouthful, you might, you're, you're bending your r right leg outwards, like in, like in hero pose, and you can place a blanket or something underneath the left hip, the straight leg hip, if you need to. And again, of course, it's five breaths, so we're well into the five breaths. So three, four, Five, and you can see I'm clasping around, I'm holding my wrist around my foot, but you might not be doing that, that's fine. You can see in this one that how it works. So the foot is, the left lower foot, lower leg is outside of the thigh. And remember, you can put that blanket or pillow cushion underneath your straight leg um, hip. And see, I'm clasping the right flexed foot. Four. Five. And lifting up. And then releasing yourself and then taking, lifting anything at all. And you can come into your vinyasa if you like to. So exhaling into chaturanga, inhaling up, downward dog exhaling back oh sorry upward dog <laughs> exhaling back into downward dog i think i've done that about five times now and then bringing yourself into janu shishasana so your right leg is folded and you your foot is in at your groin your left groin so clasping or holding somewhere on the left leg and folding forwards. So your drishti, your eye gaze, it's quite important in Ashtanga, I haven't mentioned it yet, but your drishti is focusing on your big toe or your shin. Five breaths, there we are. Lift up anything at all, and then coming into the other side. The right leg is a straight leg, bending the left leg. Three. Four, five. So you really, if you if you feel like you, yeah, just put your, don't force yourself forward if you don't feel like you want to in Janashasana or any of these ones. So coming into your Chaturanga, inhale up, exhale back down the dog. And seating yourself down, so Marichyasana, A. So your leg, your left leg is flexed, um, foot is flexed, straight leg, then bringing yourself forward. You can clasp behind if you can. You're in front of your bent leg. Three. Four. Drishti is Pada Drishti again, so Pada is your foot. Five, lifting up. Your eye gaze at your foot in these ones. So then clasping behind, you can see a bit more how to clasp behind here. So it's good for stretching your shoulders, this one. It's a lovely stretch. So gazing at your foot. 
three, four, five. Lifting up, and then we're coming into your vinyasa again. So, chaturanga, exhale, inhale, up dog, exhale, downward dog. Bring yourself forward. And placing your right hand behind and your left hand over you, exactly the same as before, but this time it's a twist. So your knee is, the left knee is up, and look, I'm showing a bind. So you can bind through. So your left arm can go through your, your um, so your right arm can go through your left leg. But I don't actually tend to do that. So I like to do it where you kind of leave yourself round with your, with your, um, left arm here okay facing forward after your five breaths lifting up and then placing your left hand behind and the right hand is leaving this time leaving on the on the left leg and see i'm showing the cl the bind from the other direction remembering to keep your right leg flexed so the straight leg is flexed in all of these, it has a, you have a flex, sorry, the foot. The foot is flexed. Four. Five. Then bring yourself forward. Lifting up, anything at all. Exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale back to downward dog. Bring yourself down onto the mat. And here we're going to come into um, Navasana, which is the boat posture. So taking five breaths in boat. So here, nice deep breaths, remember. So here you can have straight legs if you're super strong in your core. As I said before, I'm not. So I need to keep my legs bent. And if you need to, you can hold behind your thighs. So I like to come forward like I am here in a Baddha Konasana, so a wide Baddha Konasana. So folding forward for three breaths, I think this one is. Oh no, it's five breaths, sorry. So you're folding forward for five breaths. Then bring yourself back up into Navasana. Remember, lovely strong core, straight back. One. Two, three, four, and five. Remember to look after your neck. So if you're feeling it strong in your neck, you're just keeping yourself strong in your belly and it will help your neck as well. And then folding forward. One, two, three, four, Five. And when you're ready, you bring yourself up and coming one last time into Navasana boat. So remember, you can have straight legs. Remember, you could hold behind your thighs. That's what it's easy to try and kind of challenge yourself, which is fantastic. But it's also if it's if it's hurting at all or hurting your lower back, please hold behind your thighs and folding forward. One, two, three, four, five. Taking, looking up. And then now we're going to come down into bridge. So bridge and then into wheel. So you're, you have your feet hip width apart your knees are hip width apart and slowly bring yourself up and you can either clasp underneath you can clasp with your hands underneath um, or you can just hold your hands by your side and you're lifting up and taking your five breaths so your your bottom is as far off the mat as it can be and then bring yourself gently back down and then slowly peeling your spine off the mat, coming into bridge again. Two, 
three, four, five. And when you're ready to come back down, you just slowly bring your spine back to the mat. And here we are coming up into wheel. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I'm giving it a go here. So you're, you're trying to keep your knees hip width, and your feet hip width apart. You're trying to, it's actually not very, I'm clearly not in a very good position here to be doing wheel. So you can get yourself probably a bit straighter than this, I mean a bit rounder than this. And then after five breaths or so, bring your head back down gently onto the mat. And you really need to come down really gently from the wheel. And then rocking side to side, Bring your knees into your chest and then you can rotate your, your knees around. So it's a nice way of massaging out your back. It's lovely. Just do anything that feels like you're helping your back after those back bends. Bring your, your, now we're coming into Paschimottanasana. So this is the longer held Paschimottanasana. So you bring yourself forward, exhaling forward, and you're clasping your feet if you can. If you can't, you can just hold your shins or your, or your ankles in some way. And your drishti, your eye gaze, is at your feet, big toes. Or, so taking lovely deep breaths here in Paschimottanasana. So I'm doing over 10 breaths in this one. So I'm doing nice slow breaths, more like 11 or 12. Really, when you breathe in, you're gently lifting through the crown of the head and then when you exhale, you're really folding forward. Okay, so now bring yourself up and then coming down onto the mat into Shavangasana. So. Here we are, this is um, shoulder stand, five breaths. So three, so making sure that you're as comfortable as possible in shoulder stand. So you haven't, probably haven't got much padding, it's all quite quick, four. And then you're coming down five into um, halasana. So that's where you're folding back into the plow. You can clasp your hands behind you or just hold your hands on the mat. Place your hands on the mat and your five breaths here. Three. Four. Five. So just your, your feet may or may not touch behind the head. And then now you're going in, coming into Kana Pindasana, which is your, the ear pressure pose. Five breaths. One, two, remember your, so it means that your knees are right by your ears if possible, four, five, okay, now you're slowly, slowly bringing yourself down, so really having your hands on the mat and you're bringing yourself down as slow as possible, really using your core muscles, your abdominal muscles, and then bringing your legs down to reach the mat and then your hands underneath your hips and you're coming back into fish pose, which is matsya, um, matsyasana, matsyanasana. Um, so five breaths, of course. So we're on three, four, five. So now we're coming into Setu Bandhasana, which is um, an Ashtanga practice. That's what we, is known for this particular posture where you're holding your legs up. So you're in fish pose still, but then you're holding your legs up and your hands up. And only do this if you have a strong lower back. So I'm holding in my tummy muscles really strong. And you're doing roughly five breaths. I think I did a bit less. And then bringing yourself down back onto the mat. And bring yourself back up and I actually um, and now is a quick vinyasa so inhaling up and exhale back into downward dog so I don't practice headstand I only ever practice headstand if 
I have a wall um, because unfortunately my core muscles, my tummy muscles, which I've talked about before, are really not strong and end up falling over. So um, here I'm doing what's showing you some of my preliminary strengthening exercises for headstand. So I have my hands in a, I'm clasping my hands and my, my pinky finger, my inside pinky finger is, is protected in and I'm holding really strong. So I've got my, my elbows about hip um, shoulder width apart and my, my hands are clasped and I'm doing different things. So before I was up, up and downward dog and then lifting up my different legs. So to give my, strengthening myself and then now I'm coming into what sometimes gets referred to as dolphin, where you bring yourself forward into a, into a, like up, back into downward dog a bit, kind of, and then exhaling forward, or sorry, inhaling forward into, um, into like an, a bit like an upward dog. So it's a bit like you're coming forward into plank and then exhaling back into downward dog. So then coming back into balasana, child posture, resting. So you might have done headstand. So if you have done headstand, you really need to rest back. And then bring yourself back up. And we're going to come into Padmasana. So here you are in the lotus posture. Bring your hands to the heart for a moment and finding yourself in lotus posture. If you can't, you can just cross your legs, that's absolutely fine. So then bring your hands behind you and clasp behind, so you're clasping your elbows. Bring yourself forward in Padmasana. So here we're doing seven breaths. So three, four, five. Six, seven. And then when you're ready, bring yourself back up. And we're coming into yoga mudra. So you stay in, in lotus and have your hands, you have chin mudra, so that's when your thumb and forefinger are together. And you're in a meditation posture with the backs of the hands against the knees. Seven breaths. Be four. five, six, seven. So now we're going to come into Utpaltihi. So lifting yourself up as much as you can. I don't stay up very long, don't worry. Um, so I do five full breaths or ten, ten inhale exhales. So four, five. Brilliant, down. So you just do as much as you can. Just lifting yourself off of the mat. Okay, so hands at the heart center. Om Svatati Praja Baya Pari Pale Tam Naya Naine Marena Mahim Sahishala Go Brahma Mehaya Sabamashtu Nityam Lokaha Samastaha Suki no Baba Tu Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Bring the hands to the crown, to the third eye, Ajna, and to the throat, Vishuddhi, and to the heart center, Anahata. Namaste. So thank you for 
sharing this practice with me and thank you for joining in. And you can come into an extra vinyasa if you wish. So that's an upward dog. Coming to plank, then upward dog, and downward dog. And then bringing yourself down into a restful position for lying on your back for Shavasana. And really taking this time. So it's a strong practice we've just done. It's a short version of the Ashtanga Vinyasa practice. But it's still strong on the body and quite fast. And there's quite a lot of vinyasas, even though we cut out much of the vinyasas. So really feeling yourself heavy on the mat. You're feeling yourself held, really held beautifully by the earth beneath you. So even if you're not outside, you can imagine you're outside and really held by the earth. And feeling your body as heavy as you can. So there's a relaxation flowing through your whole body and there's a heaviness to your muscles your bones, feeling all your ligaments so soft, your tendons relaxed, feel a deep relaxation from the crown of the head, right at the top of your head, feeling a deep relaxation flooding your whole body, so right down your face, Relaxation all over your shoulders, your belly, and your arms, right down to your hips. Relaxation of your whole legs. So you're feeling a deep relaxation in your feet and on the soles of your feet. Your whole body is relaxed and restful. Feeling a deep, deep rest throughout your whole body. And rest here for as long as you need to. You can take this time. This is just for you. Shavasana being so important for the integration of the practice after physical yoga practice. Quietly rest. Enjoy the stillness. And either stay here resting just for as long as you like, or you can make your way eventually back up to seated. Have a lovely day. Thank you for sharing this practice. And please subscribe to my channel. <laughs> I'll be making many more videos. with love.